terms of the uh, school board and this evening with the city of Albury. Uh, without uh, a long winded introduction, I'd like myself to have a long winded introduction. I'd like to turn it over to uh, our, our um, representatives from the county um, who are leading the census uh, here for a presentation. When we had a uh, the joint subcommittee meeting of the, of the school board and the city council a couple weeks ago, um, it was requested that we invite um, the county in to get an update. 2020 census. So, oh, sorry, before we start, um, does the clerk have you recorded for because it's an official meeting? Have you recorded our who's here? Shall we do the roll call? Uh, I don't know, just can you just record who's here? Do we, do we have to do it? Do we have to do a voice, voice vote or anything like that? I don't oh, think so, right? Actually. Everybody okay. just say here all at once. Okay, here, perfect. Here, here. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Except thank you very much for being here. Thank you. So, uh, my name is Megan Gosh. I work for the Shinto County uh, Manager's Office. Are you speaking so, into the mic? Is there a microphone for you? Oh, please. Uh, yes, please. Thank you. Okay. We'll see how I do. There you go. Okay. So I'm sure you're all very well aware of the census, but there are a lot of changes this decennial, so I'll go over that. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about what does hard to count mean or least likely to respond populations that are located throughout the county. We'll also look, about, look at how the county is trying to get the most complete and accurate count of all residents of our county, citizen or non-citizen alike, as well as how we're partnering with the Office of Education and then how everyone else can be involved. So I thought I would start with a nice little video from the Census Bureau kind of giving an overview. Can one girl from a small town, an architect in a major city, and a suburban high school coach shape the future of the United States? Yes, they can. Because every 10 years, the census gives us that power. You can shape your future by responding to the 2020 census. Where do we need new roads to make our lives easier? Where will new school programs help our children thrive? Where can new health clinic benefit neighborhoods? The 2020 census will inform these decisions and shape how billions of dollars will be distributed to communities like yours each year. And in 2020, you can respond to the census online, by phone, or by mail. It's easy, <coughs> safe, and important. Make sure you and everyone you know is counted. Now is the time for you to get involved. Your community needs you. Together, we can educate and excite, inspire and make sure every voice is heard. Together, we can shape our future. So that's the Census Bureau's um, logo, shape your future, help shape your future. <clears throat> so I don't really need to go over this too much because they just showed you exactly what the census is about. It's the official count of everyone living in the United States every 10 years it occurs. Um, and it's different from the American Community Survey, which many of you may have responded a survey recently. That comes out every year, and that's for statistical purposes only. It only goes to about 3 million uh, United States residents, and then they kind of aggregate the information. Decennial counts every single person living in the United States only once. And so Census Day is officially April 1st, 2020. Does anyone know how many days away that is from today? How many? Anyone? It's 140 days from today. So we are in crunch time. I was hoping someone would guess because I was going to give you our oh. <laughs> I count t-shirt, but nobody even took a guess. So we'll give that away later. Um, the decennial census is collected per household, but the information is aggregated into statistics as well. And so it will never be identifiable by individual household. It's used for a variety of things. It's basically mostly about funding of all of our most critical community programs that we have. But it's also for transportation. It's to make sure all residents are fairly represented and for congressional apportionment as well. And there is talk that California may be at risk of losing one congressional seat due to an undercount. And so that's very concerning for our state. So what will the information, what will the survey ask? It's only 10 questions. So it begins with just gen general information about each household, the address, um, is it owned, and the phone number. But then for each other, each individual resident living in that house, you have, have to answer a series of questions. And it's not very invasive. It's just your name, your sex, your race, ethnicity, and your age. 
Um, but it has to be answered for every single person living in that household. And so that's where sometimes undercounts occur because people either get fatigued because they have a household with many, many residents, or they just kind of forget about some of the folks that are there, maybe not full time. Um, there's a lot of different reasons, but the household includes all people living in that residence, whether you're related or not. And that's kind of a key thing to remember. How is it kept secure? The Census Bureau takes security very, very seriously. Every employee signs an oath for life to protect the data. It's not shared with any other government department, not the FBI, not CIA, not ICE. Um, I actually have signed that oath as well because I can view the census data, so I do not share that information with anyone. No one else in San Mateo County has been using that information but myself. Um, and then you can also have a fine up to $250,000 or five years in prison if you share that information. <laughs> so when will the census occur? Starting March 12th, residents will receive a postcard in the mail. And this is your invitation to participate in the census. 88% of San Mateo County will be receiving an online questionnaire. So they will be invited to go online and fill out their survey. The other 12% will be immediately given a um, paper version. You'll have four uh, postcards reminding you to do that. Then they'll actually send you a paper version, and then they'll do that twice, and then if you don't fill it out then, they will come to your door. They're called Census Non-Response Follow-Up Enumerators, and they're clearly identifiable. They have the census bag and other identification, but they will ask you to fill out your survey. So our recommendation for everyone who does not want to get someone knocking at their door is to fill this survey out on your own time as soon as you can. Oh, people often ask about homeless communities. How will they be counted? So the last two days of March, it's called, um, they'll be, the Census Bureau themselves will be doing a two-day homeless count. So they'll be going to shelters, they'll be going to physical locations throughout the county. We're working very closely with our core service agencies to identify where they should perform these counts. And then there's also things called group quarters. So that's more like dormitories, farm worker housing, RV parks. They're also doing that themselves as well. So what's at stake? As I said, there's a tr tremendous amount of money. In 2015, California received $77 billion. And this is important to note that this isn't just a gift to us. This is our taxes that are coming back to us. So California is one of the few states that actually gives the federal government more than we receive back in funding. And so it's very important why everyone should be counted, because the funding is directly related on the, the number of people that are in the state. And so the money goes towards our health services like Medi-Cal, social services like our food programs, SNAP and WIC, our educational programs like Special Ed, Head Start, and school lunches. And then as well as transportation, since California is severely congested, we need the money for these large projects that are being built. In 2016, California received $118 billion, just so it keeps exponentially growing. So what are we doing in San Mateo County? Did you know that three out of every four Californians are considered hard to count or at least likely to respond, and that one may be un or one or more may be undercounted? So it's California is the hardest to count sta state in the entire nation. So what does that mean exactly? What is undercounted? So we have veterans, we have uh, Latinos, we have African Americans, we have homeless individuals, we have um, individuals that have speak language uh, English as a second language. We have immigrants and refugees. Um, and children under five is the hardest to count population in the entire nation. So why is that exactly? There's a lot of different reasons. In the 2010 census, it's anywhere between five to 10% of children under five were not counted in the census. And it could be because they're in a shared housing type of situation with divorced parents. It could be that they're a non-English speaking family and people don't know how to fill out their forms correctly. They could be newborns and people just don't think, oh, we should add this individual to our census. They're just brand new. It could be an extremely large, crowded housing situation with multi-generations or even non-related um, individuals living together. Uh, and also it could be that the child is living in an area where they're not supposed to be living in a non-traditional housing unit. So there's garage conversions that, have, that people are living in, there's RVs on the street, there's people living in sheds and backyards. We've counted a lot of these homes in the whole county, and that could be another reason why folks aren't being counted. And there's also a lot of new challenges that are occurring for this decennial. So the Census Bureau has underfunded this count this year. And so what that means is there'll be fewer local offices and less non-response follow-up enumerators to go out into the field, into their communities to help people with their census 
uh, surveys. And I had mentioned it's moving primarily online, which brings up concerns about data security and literacy barriers. And then there's a general fear and lack of trust in the federal government, and that was somewhat caused by the potential citizenship question, which is not on the survey, but it's already caused a lot of damage and a lot of fear in our communities. And then also, um, the paper version this year will only be in English and Spanish. Previously, it was English, Spanish, and Chinese. But this time, it'll only be in two languages. San Mateo County has over 100 languages spoken in our county. We have 35% of our residents are foreign born, and 47% or speak a language other than English at home. So the language barriers are, are very um, difficult to overcome as well. So what are we doing? We are coordinating with all levels of government. We have a US Census Bureau partnership specialist that we meet with twice a month and we discuss what are they doing, how can that supplement what we're doing. We meet with the state of California. We also have another partnership specialist that we meet with. They're a part of our complete count committee. We are also working regionally. So the United Way Bay Area has been funded by the state of California to coordinate efforts across all seven counties of the Bay Area. And so we're working together to make sure that we're not duplicating efforts, that our messages are the same. And then we also are bringing that information down to each of our 20 cities. So we're doing presentations like this. We're meeting with city managers, um, the meetings with Mike Callagy. We're, doing, uh, we're providing messaging, toolkits, outreach materials. We have all types of information that I'll show you later for each city to then work with their communities as well. And we're also collaborating across the county. So in December of 2018, we formed our steering committee, which is made up of department heads, representatives from our elected officials, as well as city managers from the hardest to count cities in our county. And they're providing overall guidance and, and strategy. In January of this year, we formed our Complete Count Committee, which is a cross-sector group of uh, community-based organizations, schools, libraries, uh, media. And so these folks are coming up with our general guidelines, and we're, we then broke off into strategy work groups that focused on specific issues like technology, language access, um, outreach, community outreach, local and ethnic media. And we came up with the messaging and the toolkits that we're now deploying to our community action teams. Community action teams are eight regions throughout the county that we've divided the county by hard to count populations and just general geography. We've selected a community-based organization to lead each of, those re each of those regions in their outreach efforts. They're working additionally with other partners, and so we're bringing the information out to the rest of the county. And I'm gonna ask Mifala to come up and talk for a little bit about our partnership with the Office of Education as well. So good evening. Um, Megan already mentioned that children under five are one of the hardest to count populations in um, the nation. And the reason why schools are very involved in the outreach efforts for the census is that we have lots of connections to hard to count populations. Um, and the state is focusing on um, hard to count, least likely to respond populations. And so because we touch a lot of those populations through their children, um, the state has offered county offices of education almost $2 million to do outreach to various um, schools. So in San Mateo County, we've received $67,000 to work with the Complete Count Committee to do outreach to schools. Um, so we're gonna do a couple of things, and you have the PowerPoint in front of you if you wanna follow along. Um, one of the first things we're doing is a visual and performing arts um, contest or initiative and a showcase. So what we're doing is asking children who are grades K through 12, kindergarten through 12th grade, to design in a creative way, um, to explain in a creative way why their family counts, why they count, or why their community counts. And so they can do this in any number of ways. They can um, make up a dance that explains it. They can uh, do poetry or spoken word. They can do this through photography or painting or digital media, any way that they want to express why they count, why their family counts, or why their community counts. Um, and then in March, we're gonna hold a showcase as part of our, um, one of our larger events called The Next Big Think. So students who participated in the um, art contest um, will be invited to come and either display their art or perform their art at The Next Big Think. Um, and we also plan at that event to um, have a questionnaire assistance center set up so that parents who bring their children to the showcase can also take the time to fill out the, the census while they're there. And we'll have student ambassadors there to assist them in doing that. 
Another thing we're doing is providing communications and supports to schools. So um, we are coming up with various types of collateral that we're gonna distribute to families, um, to schools to distribute to families. Things like pencils, erasers, refrigerator magnets, buttons. Um, we are also on an ongoing basis um, providing district superintendents and principals with talking points for their staff. Um, so many principals have coffees with parents in the mornings. We will provide um, talking points for them to use at those, um, at their ELAC or DLAC meetings, at their school site council meetings, at their LCAP meetings. So we're giving them um, information to use as talking points. We're giving them social uh, information to put on their social media, on their web pages. Um, to get families motivated and activated in participating in the, in the census. Um, and we also have some newsletter content that we're sharing with schools. Additionally, we have um, Sacramento County Office of Education and LA County Office of Education put together a census curriculum for students in grades 5, 8, 11, and 12. Um, and so we've done a training of trainers um, right here at the library, actually. I think it was maybe two weeks ago, maybe not even that long ago, um, with teachers who were interested in taking that information back to their districts. We are planning to do some more outreach to schools and do another training in January. Um, basically, it's an inquiry design, so the kids have an open question that they're trying to answer. The teacher teaches lessons, and then the kids go and do some research. Um, about a specific question um, related to things that there are standards that they're already learning. So um, they are addressing the census through history, social studies, through econ economics, and through government. Um, and I already said that that's fifth, eighth, 11th, and 12th grade. Um, additionally, there will be a census week, but in San Mateo County, we're calling it Why I Count Week. And so, we actually have a span of three weeks and we're asking schools to adopt one of those weeks as their Why I Count week. So it will start on March 1st, which, March, I'm sorry, March 23rd, which is the week before April 1st. It will also include the week of April 1st and the week after April 1st. So we're asking schools to pick one of those weeks and have a census week on their campus. We'd like it to be youth run. Um, and we'd like them to include a census night where they're inviting parents. And so I mentioned the showcase earlier. Um, what we're asking is that if schools have students who are participating in the showcase, that they have their own showcases at their schools during census week. And in addition to that, that um, between now and April 1st, they have at least one event um, to remind folks that the census is coming every month um, between now and April 1st. And we have money available to help AS, a student, associated student body um, to do these events. Um, and then in elementary schools, money for classrooms or teachers to work with students to put on activities. Additionally, we are partnering with um, after school programs to develop student ambassadors. So there is a training that the students will go through um, and then they can be ambassadors for their communities. So they can go out and talk to their churches or their sports teams, um, even their own schools, about the importance of the census. And then on that last page, on the last slide, there's my contact information if you want to reach out or if you'd like to send a principal in my way, I can work with them to get them some money to do some work at their schools. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about funding. Um, San Mateo County, we've already released two RFPs. The first round was for up to $1 million, and these are those community action team region leads that I spoke about earlier. Thrive, the Alliance of Nonprofits, is going to coordinate all of those eight regions. And so um, this was for nonprofit 501c3s, and we asked for outreach leaders as well as individuals to do um, questionnaire assistance centers. And what that is, is a computer that is fully dedicated to, for folks to fill out their census. And it will, um, you have to have trained staff, you have to have office hours, and it has to have in multi-languages. So that's an official questionnaire assistance center. In the second phase of funding, which is up to $500,000, we kind of brought, opened it up for a broader audience. 
and we're looking for innovative and creative outreach ideas. You could also apply to be a questionnaire assistance kiosk, which is a level below an actual center. It does not require trained staff. It's most, most of our libraries are having kiosks within their, um, their centers. We will provide training for them anyway, but they don't have to be as well-versed in the census. Um, and so those were our two funding RFPs we've already released, but we have more. So the American Library Association is funding public school and academic libraries. They have a grant out right now, and I can share that information with anyone who is interested. It's also on our website. Uh, the United Way Bay Area that I had spoken about previously, they are releasing their second RFP, and that'll be for anyone in the seven-county region. And then we are also releasing two more RFPs. One will be up to um, $20,000 for outreach, and the other is like mini contracts between $250 to $3,000, and that's to host a specific census-oriented event. So if you're throwing a barbecue or a block party and you want funding to help with that, we can provide the outreach materials and talking points, and then you host an activity. So those things, these two RFPs should be released by next week. And we're really looking for smaller organizations like uh, parent boards or faith-based organizations or um, high school groups as well. We want really grassroots um, organizations to apply for these and we haven't received that yet. So if you can help us spread that word, it would be most appreciated. Um, Mifala talked about the ambassador program. So it's something that San Mateo County is providing organizations that want to host an ambassador program. So we will provide the train the trainer training. We provide outreach materials. We have flip books. We have collaterals. We have these I count t-shirts that we're giving to ambassadors. Um, it's really to encourage civic engagement and it's, it's purposely, it's not just for the census, but we're hoping that it's a long-term relationship with the county and the other organizations throughout the county. And some of the folks that are doing this right now, we have um, the League of Women Voters and People Power and they're really combining elections and census. Um, the census is coming out right after the elections. So people are going to be receiving a tremendous amount of paper and advertisements and radio play and bus wraps. So we want to be able to make sure people know the census is still coming and do not throw away that postcard you're going to be receiving in the mail. The Boys and Girls Club, we're focusing on um, youth all around the county. And then we have the San Mateo Adult School was our pilot project. And though they were working with immigrant focused um, English as a second language. And so that was super successful. And then also are faith-based like Catholic Charities, and as Mifala spoke about, the students as well. So we have many different programs going on. We ask for more people to sign up and we can help provide that training. And then we're also lucky enough to be in the Silicon Valley, so we have some pretty cool tools that we're using this time around. Um, we have a, a texting pledge. So if anyone is so inclined and they feel like texting the word COUNT to 650-200-2743, it will send you this pledge card saying that I'm pledged to fill out the survey, and then you can opt in for more information or reminders as we get closer. So I invite everyone to do that. We also have on our website, it's a uh, help chat bot. And this was created by the state of California. It's available in 13 languages. So if people have generic questions about how to fill out their survey or where they can receive ac um, assistance, this will help them as well. And then United Way Bay Area is also using their 211 helpline. And that'll be available in 200 languages to help individuals find assistance where they need to go. But we need everyone's support. So if you can, we have on our website, which I'll show you in a little bit, we have all different types of resources. We have flyers, we have collaterals, we have talking points, we have message maps. This, um, this little countdown widget anyone can put on their website, it'll direct them to back to San Mateo County's census website. You can incorporate it into school curriculum or any other newsletters or outgoing information. You can share everything on social media. We have a social media guide that's posted on our website. It has uh, five posts per month that are census related. And then you can follow us on Twitter as well, or you can host an ambassador program. There's lots of ways to be involved. This is our website, it's hard to read, I apologize. But on um, that right-hand side, there's a pink box that says outreach resources, and that's where all this information is located. We actually have a, um, a video presentation that you can just play, so you actually don't have to give it yourselves. It's in Spanish, Chinese, and English at this point, and it walks through the basics about Census 101, why is it so important, and then we have other videos that we've created, um, web tools, and requests for any type of collaterals as well. And one important thing is the Census Bureau is heavily recruiting right now for these non-response follow-up individuals. They need 800 people, hire 800 people in San Mateo County, they're really well-paying jobs, they're $30 an hour, they're part-time, they're flexible, 
<clears throat> excuse me, and they just waived the requirement to be a U.S. citizen. So that's huge news because they really want to hire people that work to work in the communities where they live. And so they speak the language. They know these individuals. So they're trusted people. Um, so I encourage you to share this information. We have a 18, 18 years old. Um, but we have all this information on our website as well. We have flyers and JPEGs and stuff you can post. And there was, oh. That's 20, 20 cents. In 10 years, I will be 26 years old. That's 10 years of my educational career. If we are not all properly counted, that means that public funds will be reduced. Now, as youth in this community, I feel empowered to stand up and help others fill out their online form and to create a safe environment where everyone feels invited. The census is important for you, your family, and your community. So I meant to introduce that a little bit better. It happened a little faster than I assumed it would. Um, we worked with six residents throughout the county. We have a veteran. We have someone from the adult school um, youth commission. Uh, we have a Kaiser doctor, pediatrician, speaking in Tagalog, um, and a couple other folks as well, showing why residents think it's important. And then we just finished filming um, about 18 county employees, kind of explaining why it's important to them and the programs that they're working in. Again, all, those, all that information is posted on our website. I encourage you to, to view it. But here's my contact information in our office. And Mifala and I would be happy to answer any questions you may have. Yeah. Does every county do it at the same time? Every, everyone in the entire United States. The same exact week. April 1st is census. But that's not, that's not the only time you can do it. So starting March 12th, you get an invitation. You can self-respond up until June 31st. But then around mid-May to early June, that's when the enumerators will come out. But everyone has to be done by July 31st. So it's federally funded and it's underfunded, but they owe us the money? And why is it underfunded? I can't answer to the federal government. I can only tell you what San Mateo County is doing. But um, since it is underfunded and since there was the potential citizenship question, the state of California has allocated $180 million to help with census outreach. But it's so, underfunded federally? Is correct. That, okay. Yeah, so we're trying to supplement with outreach. The San Mateo counties, um, we're doing about $3 million worth in giving contracts and outreach. That's not reimbursed? No. No. Yeah. Um, real quick, uh, so it's just a matter of you live here because we have a lot of, like, um, council generals, mm -hmm. and so it doesn't matter what your, like, what your... Well, your form, yeah, your formal residence is. If you are residing within our city, we need to count you. That is correct. And then for military military personnel who are overseas, stationed overseas, the army or all the military will be counting them overseas, but in where they're based from at home, so that those numbers will go towards their home state. So visiting diplomats, anything like that. You live here, we count you. You live here, we count you. Thank you. My question is kind of going on that. If we have family members that come and stay three months or six months out of the year and it happens to be over April, we count them. That's correct. Okay. And this is a different subject. Ten years ago or maybe 20 years ago, we did the short form and then we also got a long form. So the short form is the 10-year the decennial census. The long form is the American Community Survey that comes out every year. So it just happened to be really close to each other. Yeah, they okay. just came out. People are filling them out right now, the long form. Okay. So people are those confused. are really long forms, they if anybody has long. gotten one of those. It's pretty intense information. It is. Yes. So if we're going to request uh, support of some form, whether it's collateral or funding, um, how much advance notice do you want to have? as far as coordinating it. So we have a, um, a form online that you can request collaterals. So if you could give us like a week, that would be great, because we're just trying to track where it's going to, how many folks, like if you have an event, how many do you think will be there? Um, and then if we have what you're requesting, then we'll get it to you. Um, funding, the RFP will be published hopefully by the end of next week, and then we'll shoot out a blast to everybody, and we'll, all the city managers, everybody, and then you can um, apply that way. Um, I'm disappointed to hear that the Chinese uh, translation is not available, uh, but I would think, in especially speaking for my school district uh, individually, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that we can get excellent translation assistance down at that level uh, so that our parents especially are aware of, of uh, 
what they need to do. So um, was there a particular reason why they cut that, uh, that particular language? I do not know, and I know that there's been a lot of Asian communities that have been fighting to get it back um, included, but it, the, the federal government has said no. Um, okay. But we will have questionnaire assistance centers that will be in language, as well as, I forgot to mention, there'll be um, 59 language guides, so they'll be online and in paper version to assist other languages as well. This question might be more for the school board. I thought I heard that we've got a growing Arabic population or possibly Muslim population. Should we also be making sure that we're reaching out to that community? Yes, yeah, so one of our community action teams is CARE, um, and so they are reaching specifically out to Muslims in, in San Mateo and San Francisco counties. And so we're definitely, it's on our radar. We're, we are translating some things in Arabic, but we just can't do every single thing. But the United Way, they are translating into 12 different languages, all their materials, and that's available for anyone, even if you're funded or not, to use. Um, question along the similar lines here. Uh, the uh, teachers unions, is there a way we can require their assistance here? I mean, the way you set it up is that it seems very voluntary whether the teachers want to participate and get the information here. It's so vital to all of us, um, and I'm wondering at the school district, can we require teachers to take this? I'll defer to Mifala for that one. participate in outreach? Um, I don't think we can require it. We, were strongly, we are strongly encouraging schools, principals, teachers to participate. Um, CTA is right down the block here. Um, can we get them to be an active participant in encouraging their membership? I have not reached out to them, but I, I, that's a great idea. Pretty yeah. please. <laughs> Um, I have a question. So a lot of our families are also um, share custody. Mm -hmm. So how, do they have to just agree on who, which, which household they're going to count that child? The official response is wherever they are living on April 1st. But I think, in, um, <laughs> I think it'll have to be a discussion between the parents just to make sure that they're not double counting. Um, but the official response is April 1st. Wherever you are living April 1st is that's I think that um, I think it'd be good if the school district and the, and the city would co uh, work together and figure out which languages we want to um, target to get the most bang of our bucks and then uh, coordinate some sort of with some of our groups. I'm sure we can find nonprofit groups in the, in the county or the city to help us with uh, outreach. But I think Chinese is really important too. Yeah. Well, Chinese is probably one of them, yeah. We have Would, to figure out how to translate. As far as the RFPs go, can the Asian newspapers apply for one of these RFPs? Um, they can apply for the third round, and I think they could have probably for the second as well. We actually advertised in Tsingtao. Um, our, one of our outreach coordinators used to work for them as a reporter, so we have a good connection there. Because that might be the most direct route to idea. get to, um, is Filipino have them news. apply for the RFP. Right. We're also doing um, WeChat. Is that what it's called? Yeah, WeChat. Yeah, um, so they're setting that up as well. So we're trying all different types of avenues. That'd be great. Yes. Yeah, you don't need route reach through the senior community? Yes, we are. So we're, we're working with all the commissions from San Mateo County. And so one of them is um, aging adults. And so they have an ombudsman program. And so we'll be working with them since they're, they're visiting all of these seniors all the time and going to these senior centers. We'll also be working with senior centers to provide kiosks and information as well. Can I suggest Meals on Wheels, too? Mm -hmm. um, having them be mm -hmm. a part of this process, because those are usually isolated right. seniors um, that aren't getting out much or have access to a lot of this. So if we can bring them in, mm -hmm. maybe with the delivery of meals, they can also get the information. Right. That would remind me of if you are in the hospital or if you've broken a hip and you're in a, a care facility, where are you counted? So those are considered group quarters. So those will be counted by the Census Bureau. If you're in an assisted living care facility, that's called a group quarter. But if you live in a, um, a senior adult residence where you have your own address, then you receive a survey. So hospitals and assisted that could, living. That could sway our event. So when my father fell and broke his hip, he was in Pacifica for three weeks to do physical therapy to, mm -hmm. to walk again. So would he, if that happened on April 1st, is he a Pacifican or a Milbrayan? 
he is where he is on April 1st. But again, that's the, I can only tell you what the Federal Bureau tells me. We have two senior residents, big ones, mm -hmm. the Magnolia and the other. Are you guys going out to those? We will be. We have not yet. But yes, they're on our radar. Great. Thank you. Anybody else remember how many days until the census? 140. <laughs> I only brought one, sorry, but that's good. <laughs> Anything else we can answer? Well, I thank you for uh, coming out, and uh, I think this is a critical issue for um, the entire city. Uh, we definitely depend on those dollars. Um, so people at home, if you'd like to get involved, uh, please uh, con either contact the city, the school district, or the San Mateo County smccensus.org. Um, also, I'd like to recommend uh, a lot of people that you can WeChat they also, and those phones can scan QR codes. Um, yeah, and then, uh, I mean, the, uh, I know the Asian community uses that a lot. And then um, we also have access to those freeway signs, the advertising, so uh, if you like to, you know, you can ask our city, we can possibly, or, you know. City manager, yeah. can we get this on the billboard? Yes. <laughs> And the other cities also have access. Like uh, I know San Carlos has two, or Belmont has two, or something like that. Yeah. Would that also include, uh, city manager, our electric billboards? Because they, That's what we've I meant. been. Well, no, I thought he meant the one on, on 101. I'm talking about the portable ones that we use for traffic, but we've been using them for public events, and I think we'll find out this Saturday how well they help get people to that event. And what about a do? It's probably worth it to us to do a sign over Broadway and maybe a sign down at Park and Park or near Lamita Park School. Can the school board put them up on their message boards? The high school? That's yeah. true. High school yeah. yeah, all the elementary school have message to boards. To Mills High School or the San Mateo High School District. Yeah. Talk to Dr. Skelly, we'll talk yeah. to him. I have a bunch of postcards on the um, table. Good. Does it save the day of the return information? Perfect. <coughs> Perfect. Perfect. Okay, thank okay. you very thank much. You. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so this, um, I'm going to ask Vaughn, and I'd like to thank uh, our city staff, Vaughn and uh, Tom and their staff for uh, putting this together and also working to get with uh, Collaborate. This is a good example of the collaboration that our community is so famous for. Um, and so, again, if you're at home and, you're, and you just think that, uh, you know, just, you can also do more than just fill out the form. You can help by helping educate people about the importance of the uh, the uh, census, yeah. and then probably the most yeah. important question you can ask, Fill tell people is ask them, you know, what, what type of funding things yeah. that they like to see improved in their city. If they want better roads, better health care, language translations, um, more funding for schools. You know, this census makes a huge impact on those, on those issues and yeah. potholes. If you want your potholes fixed, finish, complete your census form. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And, uh, I'm going to just, I'm going to close the meeting and uh, we have a seven o'clock regular meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Wayne.